Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today, it's going to be a match between Queen and Ample here on Coliseum. This replay was sent to me by RJB as part of an Ultimate Replay Pack. Again, thank you, RJB. This is going to be a Patreon cast, which just means that I'm going to cast it one month before it shows up on YouTube ad-free. So if you're interested in ad-free viewing of my casts, go ahead and go to patreon.com slash falconpaladin and sign up for $1 a month support. That's all you need to do. Just $1 a month. And let's go ahead and get right on into it here. Top right, orange Zerg player, it is Queen. And in the bottom left, it's Ample. A green Terran player. We had a gosh darn epic match of <sighs> epic proportions between these two players last time I cast them, if you remember that. It's, you know, a couple months ago now, but... Shoot, search Queen vs. Ample on my channel and you will see an amazing... ZVT featuring battle cruisers and it's some of the best play I've seen from a Terran in a TVZ from Ample. So I, I'm interested to see what he's going to do in this particular match against Queen. Because again, Queen, a super terrifying elite level Zerg player. I can't imagine we're going to see two games in a row where Ample looks that good, but hey, who knows? I certainly don't. So this is Coliseum. We've had some good uh, games on this map. We've had some Gosu games on this map. We have some Day9 versus Artosis games on this map. We've had... Oh, oh, we had just recently a Gosu game on the map where a mass scout play was used against Terran at, to, like, really nice effect. So, Coliseum, good place, I've decided. Desert tiles, too, are also very, very nice. We don't get a lot of those, I don't think, in our games. Mostly jungle, I think, is what a lot of, most of the maps are. But hatch first in it here. It's queen, no problem. Barracks into gas here from Ample. But see, the good thing about Coliseum is you do have this nice little high ground, easy to take, easy to defend natural base. Same thing what Ample's gonna do here too when he expands, I have to imagine. I have to imagine this is gonna be a one rax expand. But we don't know. We don't know yet. That's why we're here. We're here for the games. Hit the like button. If you're excited for a ZVT featuring Ample and Queen, because I know I am mucho definitely excited. Macro hatch coming up here too. I'm not going for a third base. That's not what the production tab says. It's just a you know a third hatch, which means it's a macro hatch. This drone being as annoying as it can possibly be. But yeah, not a problem. But if a repair, some repair work until the marine comes out, and then just shut it down. Shut it down, boys. Oh, actually taking the time to kill the sunken colony. Which, this is just here to prevent players from walling off. Uh, walling off the opening for against Zerg. Because their natural base is up here, right? It's not by their choke where it normally is. So they don't get creep out here. And so just to prevent people from coming down and plopping down two gateways or two barracks here, there's this sunken colony providing creep. But you can kill it if you want to. Get rid of that creep, which I haven't actually seen a lot of players bother to do. I don't feel like, but anyway. Got ourselves a lair on the way. The old creep colony is going to try to connect all three of his bases with creep, which I can appreciate. It's just, it's nice to have the vision, right? It's nice to have just, uh, it just makes Terran players feel uncomfortable if they have to be on creep the whole time they're trying to kill you. Can you imagine if creep slowed down enemy units and sped up Zerg units? How overpowered would that be? I think the answer is all of the overpowered. <laughs> Ooh, Hydralisk Den opening. Not going for the Spire. Or, por que no los dos? We could get a Spire as well. Keep an eye on that thing. But yeah. I bet there were some meetings at Blizzard headquarters where they, uh... Oh, look at the drones getting pulled to keep... Oh, that's disgusting. One drone died there. Sunken took care of several vultures. That was a sick play from Queen. Really, really nicely done. But yeah, I bet they, you know, messed around with different effects on the creep. Because in StarCraft 2, the creep does give a speed boost to ground Zerg units, which is awesome. 
But can you imagine if it also slowed down enemy units? Like, how much would you not want to be on creep if you're a Terran or a Protoss player? Ugh, terrible. So we're going Vulture Spider-Mine opening here from Ample. Interesting, interesting play. Because, I mean, you know there's a Hydralisk Den, so like... I don't know, just Hydras do really, really well against Spider-Mines. Especially with the range upgrade, they outrange them, they hit them pretty fast and hard. But alright, Ample's doing it. Is he just going... Just Apparently just going for the straight mech opening, which we have not seen this in some time on the channel. We've seen a ton of bio play in ZVTs. We haven't seen a lot of even bio uh, transitioning into mech. We've pretty much just seen bio the whole way through. But look at Ample going for the straight up mech opening here against Queen, which... Oof, I don't know. I feel like most of the ZVTs that I cast... If the Terran ends up going for a big mech play, it's really hard for the Zerg player to deal with it. Once that siege tank count gets super high, it feels like even Dark Swarm doesn't protect you against their attacks anymore. And then you're left like, well, do I make a bunch of queens and try to spawn brutaling them? Uh, the answer that I've seen that's most consistent is drops, right? Just getting drops. Same thing against Protoss. Just getting the drop upgrade for your overlords and then dropping on top of those tanks, but... We're not doing tanks yet. This is definitely a uh, Goliath opening here. Out of Ample. Man, look at this. Goliath straight up opening. Which we've seen do really, really well. But it usually kind of results in shorter games, right? Where either it works in, you know, 10 minutes or so, or it doesn't work in 10 minutes or so, and they're dead. So, I don't know. We'll see. Goliaths do half damage to Mutalisk, so Mutas are not a bad answer to this. But the problem is, when the Karen boost is done, you, they're just hitting the Mutalisks from so far away. <laughs> they're getting two volleys in before the Mutalisks can close to even attack them. So, that's two free hits, right? Anyway, protecting this base quite nicely. The Muta flaw. Oh, one scouting Mutalisk. Says, oh, a million Goliaths. I am dead, but scouting information acquired. Thank you very much. The Mutas immediately head the other way. As the third base comes up here from Queen. He's going to start getting missile attacks. Go for faster Hydralisk movement as well. Getting Flyer Carapace. So there's going to be some kind of a Hydra Muta style setup here. A lot of speedlings, especially with Adrenal Glands upgrade. Can be amazing against Goliaths. But you're not going to get Adrenal Glands before the initial push from the Goliaths if that's what the opening is. So, a bunch of Lings with some Muta support, a bunch of Lings with some Hydra support can really work out, too. The Muta Harass, I'm surprised, is getting anything done, considering the, num see, the number of Goliaths here. Look at how far away they can hit you from with a Charon boost. The reason Goliaths have Charon boost is because of Mutalisks. StarCraft 1, which lasted for about six months. StarCraft 1 was not around for a super long time before Brood War was released. Same year, 1998, right? Mutas were everything in every matchup. They were the standard in ZVZ, ZVP, and ZVT. Just they were too... They were fast. They basically did splash damage, right? There wasn't a super great answer to any of it. So that's why most of the new units introduced in Brutal War was Blizzard going, Mutalisks are too good. We need something that can help to counter them. And that's why Charon Boost exists. That's why Corsairs exist, right? Two major things. That's why Valkyries exist as well. So third base in a spot of trouble here from Queen. Hydras taking the high ground here. This is a lot of Hydralisks, actually. Okay, so this should be enough. Like, Goliath ground damage is really good. But this is a lot of Hydralisks. And if one thing can kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe <laughs> with ground Goliath damage, it's going to be Hydralisks. Yeah, look at them target firing the Mutalisks, making, like, they're kind of the larger threat in this game, right? Is the Mutalisks. Not so much the Hydras, because guess what we're making back home is tanks, also a Radiate getting started, Siege Mode coming in. Queen's Nest on the way from Queen. And so far, I'd say we're alright. Queen's doing okay. Down about 10 workers, should be able to drone up here quite a bit. And is on the 3 base. So we're gonna go for a bit of a Hydra push and hoping that Siege Mode isn't done yet. And it's just Goliaths, because these Hiders are going to do pretty okay against these guys. Yeah, Spider Mine's getting picked out of the ground. Again, Hiders are really, really good at finding these things and neutralizing them. 
Well, unless you snipe the Overlord. And then suddenly you can't see spider mines anymore. Well, if all the Goliaths are out here, then the Mutalisks will just cruise on in here. There's a couple missile turrets. Gonna make these guys get out a little bit. There's only six of them. We're not super committing to this. Five queens and production from Queen. Oh! Okay, Mutalisks. Oh, they are not expecting this. They are not expecting to be able to get several SCVs down here, dropping the SCV count to 50. Yeah, I mean, they're mostly dead. Oh, five of them get out. Six came in, five escaped. Oh, and the delay on the third base. Queen, killing it. Are we gonna upgrade spawn broodling? Are we getting in snare? I just, like, all you get with queens initially is parasite. I don't know why it would make this many queen, five more queens. Dude, Queen is not using Queens as a last resort here. Queen is going right to Queens. I'm feeling so repetitive saying this, but the answer to the mech is Queens at 11 minutes. Not Queens at 25 minutes when everything else you've tried has completely failed. I sort of love this. I would like this more if it was just a million tanks instead of a million Goliaths and some tanks. Because again, the Goliaths with their range are going to get some big time smacks off on your queens as they come in to deliver to the spawn broodling. There it is, spawn broodling coming in. Holy crikey. Queens are gross, man. I know a lot of Zerg is gross, but I really think that queens are like the grossest unit. Alright, I mean, Ample's back up to 57 SCVs. He's doing alright. His third base is happily running despite being delayed a tiny bit. More factories in production. And the third base is uh, kind of about to get assaulted here. Top left base has been taken by Queen as well. Yeah, and then coming up this ramp, just not, you know, coming up a ramp as Hydralisks in general is a pretty scary thing. You're pretty squishy. But if there's tanks on the high ground, you especially don't want to be doing that stuff. Yeah, Hydras are just playing the role of Dragoons right now, right? Dragoons, they need to roam around the map, kill spider mines as they get laid. Because if you don't do that, eventually the whole gosh darn map is going to be spider mines. And then you're going to be mad. It's like weeds. you got to keep up on weeds. You can't let weeds go crazy. Or else then your whole yard is weeds. And you hate yourself. I have some neighbors whose entire yards are dandelions. It's great. Just the thing is, it's not that hard to deal with. Anyway. Huh. To each their own, I always say. Yeah, so we've got queens with spawn broodling. They are here. Again, weird looking things, queens. Look at their faces. Look at them. Ugh. We're also getting Gamete Meiosis, Queen Energy. Are you kidding me right now? So here's the problem. I think tanks are a beautiful target for spawn broodling. Goliaths, I just don't feel like they're quite worth the cost. Ow, see what I said? Do you see what I said about the Goliaths? Do you see? I don't know. Ample's defending this pretty well. Queen's actually supply blocked after losing that Overlord. Not great, but kind of keeping Ample on three bases while Queen goes up to five is good. The fear of the Queens, perhaps enough. Oh, losing a Queen, two Queens, and one gets irradiated. Okay, well, hmm. I don't know. I guess we're still kind of doing it. I just don't... Look, the tank count is really high still. <laughs> Even with the energy upgrade, you can't do two spawn broodlings on full energy. You have to wait to do your second one. It's like the best you can do here is a one spawn broodling, wait for a while, and then make your second spawn broodling attack. So, I mean, if you ever wanted to make queens viable, I think making spawn broodling cost a little bit less. So you can cast two of them on full energy. This is like Psionic Storm, right? Alright, so we para- I love the Parasite on the Science Vessel play. 
because now it's providing vision to Queen, and the only way to get rid of it is either researching restoration, which I don't think Apple's going to do, or killing your science vessel. Or, I guess the third option is keeping it out here in the wilds to be killed by Hydralisks anyway. It's an irradiate off. That's cool. I like how he's keeping the science vessel away, right? Keeping it away from the rest of the army. You don't know. You don't know how much there is up here. It's a lot, probably. So if Queen's going to win this game, it's going to be by virtue of having five to six bases to three bases for Ample. I mean, again, you can do a lot on three bases if you're mechan. And uh, we're moving out. So we got the 2-2 upgrades. The Hydralisks are at two attack and no armor. But again, I'm not entirely sure how useful. Okay, all right. A couple tanks get wiped out to spawn brutally. Thinning the numbers a tiny bit here, but there are still eight at least. Science Vessel gets sniped by the Hydras on their retreat path. The Filer Mound on the way. Uh, is it too late for that is my question. Is it too late to try to go for the Dark Swarm Plague stuff? Because I'm feeling like this is a little bit dicey. Okay, surprise flank attack of Hydras before the tanks siege up, but then the tanks siege up and all the Hydras are dead. I'm gonna tell you right now, all of these Hydralisks are dead. Do they know that they're dead? They do now. Even this group. Oh, take out a couple siege tanks. Way to go. Oh, zero siege tanks die, actually. Horrible. Again, trying to deal with mech with Hydralisks once the tank count is like this is just a no-go scenario. Zero percent. Zero percent going. Queen tried the fancy queen opening here, but I don't know. I mean, I guess we have a couple more coming in, but again, you can only spawn brooding on two of these siege tanks, and that will still leave us with a bunch. Okay, one down. Sunken's doing their best to get upgraded against upgraded mech. Not what they want to do. Plus three attack for the mech is done now too as well. Uh, all right, so top left base by Queen is dead. He's trying to sort of come over here, but... Okay, spawn brooding on these backside tanks. The reinforcing tanks are getting spawn brooding, but the main force of the tanks are still in here. Thank you for asking. I guess maybe you just try to set up a base somewhere else. Got all these drones. Like, that evacuation was into a dead end of doom. Okay, here we go again. <laughs> Radiate, spawn, brutaling, Charon boosted attacks. Queen Death Sound is one of the coolest ones, though. They're kind of gross, but their death sounds are neat. Scourge on the way. Lurker's on the way. More traditional attempts to deal with the Terran are on the way from Queen. Yeah, expanding here, well, here. And I assume setting up to expand down here once the queens have vetted it as a location. Fourth base on the way from Ample. What about 18 minutes is a tiny bit late, but he just wiped out two of queens' bases. So I think his plan has been working out just fine. Thank you for asking. Plague Ooh on the way from Queen. Hit that like button if you're enjoying this game, by the way. It's just lost the algorithm to know that I'm here. And let other people know that I am here as well. And uh, thanks for being part of the Falcon Paladin experience. Got a lot of Brood War games on the channel, so if you're new here, just click on that Brood War playlist, and you can go back all the way to oh, 2016 I started casting Brood War. A decent chunk of time ago. Again. Nope. 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 See? The sound of Zerglings dying. Nope. Scourge connecting on nothing. Yeah, man. I just... Dealing with mech. It's this never-ending cavalcade of attempts with Dark Swarm and Plague and Defiler. An incredible unit, Defiler, but honestly somewhat easily counterable with Irradiates. Like, that guy died. He threw down two Dark Swarms and died. That's it, man. Thanks for hanging out. Look at this. Ample taking the top left here, too. Ample is a beast. He is a beast here today. Oh. 
Queen. We're still doing the Queens, everybody. Look. We got the upgrade. Ooh, Scourge takes down a couple of the science vessels. That's nice. Two, yep, two tanks down. Sometimes if you're lucky, you can get like three tanks because the spawn broodlings do spawn broodlings and they can jump on other tanks and friendly fire splash can take them down from friendly tanks. But yeah, man, it's 173 to 138 supply at 20 minutes. This is a slow throttling by Ample here. I don't... It's not over, over. Man, look at Ample. Double expanding top left here. He went from three bases to six really, really fast. Like, he's at 20 minutes on six bases. Queen's jumping in again, trying to whittle down that tank count. That's a free science vessel. Maybe this one, too. Ooh, good hit. Got it. But only one. Ooh, that was close. That was a very close to death here. Queen, like, defending as hard as he can. Also, apparently trying to reinforce up here while walking through the middle of the map. It's not going to work out in the end. Uh, this lurker is not even burrowing. I don't know where your APM is right now, Queen. Your 300 APM seems a little bit lost. But, you know, bottom right bases expanding. It's just the Terran is more cost efficient than you. And he has more bases than you. And he's up 40 supply on you, which is not going to work out. Again, Goliath DPS is more than Marine DPS. They're just slower and derpier, and that's the trade-off, right? Uh, kind of coming down this ramp a little bit. So many siege tanks, though. I don't know, man. Queen's holding. He's holding here admirably. Nice plague. Ooh, all over them tanks. Plague and tanks is something we don't see enough of, I don't think. But man, Queen just dropped below 100 supply. Even if they're plagued, you still gotta hit them. Okay, that kind of works. Mutalisks come in. Taking down several of these siege tanks. But that's your good game. Queen taps out. And Ample, once again, just looking dominant against one of the better Zerg players in the entire world in Queen. Holy smokes. That was absolutely incredible. Oh. Oh, incredible, incredible stuff. What a match. What a match out of Ample. Just right into the mech. No marines, no medics, no fire bats, none of that stuff. We're just making a million siege tanks. We're opening Goliaths. Making a million siege tanks. Queen recognized what was happening. Went for the queen play of all queen plays. Like, just queens as soon as he could until the end of the game. It's just not enough. It's really just not enough to come in there and take out even up to six tanks from the group of, like, 15. It's just not enough. They're not worth... They're not worth the cost. They're not worth the gas they cost, the upgrades they have to get. I guess they did get a carapace upgrade or two, but... Wow. And then Ample... So basically, he three-based it, came up this left side, wiped out the fourth and fifth bases of Queen, triple expanded behind it to go to six bases, and even though Queen had expanded to the bottom right, it didn't matter. Right? Just didn't have the ability to wipe out his army by any stretch whatsoever. I still think drops are better. I just do. I just think drops are way, way more effective in these situations than queens are. We've seen queens used to incredible effect. Sometimes. We've seen them work two or three times on the channel. Not today, though. It was Ample's game to win. What a beast. 174,000 points for Ample, 149,000 for Queen. Ended up outproducing the Terran by about two to one. Let's see the kill-death ratio. That is a more than 2 to 1 kill-death ratio. That's how you win games, everybody. And then resources across the board. Ample mined more gas. Mined just 400 fewer minerals. And outspent oh, outspent the Zerg by 1,000. Cannot beat a mecking Terran who outspends you in resources. I'm sorry. It's just... He's just not going to happen. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Man, what a... I mean, that was just mm, some really, really, really spicy and amazing ZVT. Out of Ample. I like this guy. I'm just telling you right now. Ample's an up-and-coming Terran player. He is terrifying, he is scary, and you should respect him. Put respect on his name, okay? All right. Yar. So that right there is going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered and a Patreon cast. Go ahead, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. You take care of yourself.